During this episode, I'm excited to welcome David Garner, the Chief Operating Officer of CalmWave, the world's first AI-based platform that empowers providers with the insights they need to deliver more data-driven, more efficient, and quieter care. While together, David shares his journey of co-founding CalmWave and the future of healthcare innovation. Additionally, David outlines how CalmWave plans to expand across the healthcare paradigm and the potential for his company to work beyond the healthcare industry. Join us to learn how David and the CalmWave team create a sustainable and less stressful environment for patients and healthcare providers. Let's go. Welcome to Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli, where we highlight and speak with the innovators, the game changers, and the pioneers who are deeply passionate and relentless in solving the problems our world is facing today. This is your opportunity to connect with and learn from these leaders and to support them on their mission. Perhaps they will soon be hearing your story as well. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you on this journey with us. Hi, David. A big welcome to our podcast. Hi, Mike. Given your mission of leveraging technology to positively impact the world and the journey you went on that led to co-founding your company, CalmWave, I am fired up for our conversation today. But before we dive in, a bit of housekeeping. While listening to any of our episodes, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast. You will automatically receive episode updates in your podcast player. Simply search Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Lastly, please visit the bottom of the episode notes to connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter in order to further the conversations occurring on this podcast. All right, David, it's almost time for our community to learn how you and the CalmWave team use advanced analytics and artificial intelligence to empower providers with the insights they need to deliver more data-driven, more efficient, and quieter care. But first, what's that one piece of advice that you would give to others who are passionate about reimagining the health of our world? Well, thank you for having me, first of all, Mike. And I would say it's right in the question you asked, passionate pioneers. It's actually being passionate. What I have found where I've reached the most success is finding an area where I can gain emotion. I can get a visceral response where I want to take on a challenge. That's where the success really occurs. And that's where the fulfillment really occurs. You got to have your heart in it in the first place, right? You know, as well as I do, David, moving healthcare forward, innovating within this industry is tough. You can't just have like, hey, I got a thought. I think this new idea, this new technology will help move the industry forward. You have to have fire burning every five of your being to move this industry forward. Would you not agree with that? Oh, of course. I mean, there's going to be the challenge. There's going to be the grind. And while you're in that grind, when you're in the suck, you want to make sure it's worth it. And you could really find a love and a passion for the end outcome that you can envision. I absolutely love it. And I think the folks that tune in and know me personally, I'm incredibly fired up and remain so. Because I know as a nation, if we rally together, we can move this industry forward. We have some of the smartest, most passionate people on the face of this planet in this nation. There's no reason why we can't reimagine healthcare if we work together. So I love your passion, David. I know we're going to dive into that passion, some of the whys, some of the journey of how you went and co-founded CalmWave. We're going to unpack that and more after we get back from thanking our community champion sponsor. Located in Denver, Colorado's nationally ranked River North District, Catalyst is a healthcare innovation campus that brings together stakeholders from across the industry to accelerate innovation and drive real, lasting change our nation desperately needs. From established organizations to startups, from accelerators to advocacy organizations, and from medical schools to global companies, everyone at Catalyst works side by side to create, develop, refine, and bring to market cutting-edge innovations that will fundamentally transform healthcare as we know it. With industry leaders like Medical Group Management Association, Olive, Medical Solutions, UC Health, Cirrus MD, and many others calling Catalyst home, along with innovative pioneers visiting from across the nation, Catalyst continually fosters their foundational belief that collaboration and partnerships will move the healthcare industry forward. To virtually tour Catalyst and claim your space on campus or host an upcoming event, visit CatalystHealthTech.com or visit the top of the episode notes and click on their link. All right, we are back with David Garner, COO of CalmWave. David, you brought the heat out the gates. You absolutely have to have your fire in the belly to move this industry forward. It's not easy, but it is possible. Can't wait to dive in all things CalmWave. You guys are going after a huge problem in this industry, one that I believe can definitely be solved. And I love the way you guys are going after. We're going to get into all of that and more in just a moment. 
But of course, we got to hear a little bit of the journey of how this all came to be in the first place. How did you and your co-founder bring this company to life? What were those aha moments? What was the journey that led up to co-founding Calmway? Of course, then we'll talk about, hey, what's going on in the marketplace today? How's the response been? in the marketplace, in the industry of what you and the Calm Wave team are bringing to them. Of course, how we can help you out as well. And then, of course, where we can be thinking about things are happening in the future. Things are moving so fast in the industry. Where do you see things heading? What should we be mindful of as listeners of this podcast? But of course, David, let's rewind that clock first. How did this all come to be in the first place? Take us behind the curtain. Take us under the hood. What were those aha moments? What were some of those sparks that had you and your co-founder launch Calm Wave? Yeah. First of all, I'm really excited to hear what I have to say. <laughs> I absolutely I, love it. <laughs> no, well, so I have to say this really started during the pandemic. I had some successful runs in the startup world within the health tech space. I'm a 25-year veteran in health tech, and I was looking for the next journey. I wanted to go small. I wanted to be zero to one from the beginning, founding a company from the get-go, trying to solve an impossible problem. I was seeking partners, I was seeking ideas, and I run into the Paul Allen Institute for AI. It is its mission. Paul Allen, co-founder of Microsoft years ago, had the idea of artificial intelligence for the common good. That led to creating a research institute, including an incubator. So I got involved with the incubator with the idea I'd be an entrepreneur in residence. And went over there and realized that a lot of the companies that were at this incubator were healthcare focused. And I met my future co-founder, Ophir Ronan, a renegade in many ways, which had a really crazy idea. All the noise that you see in hospitals today, 90 some percent of them or the noise is non-actionable. It's false alarms. It's so much chaos. It's so much noise. He thought he could solve it. And what's interesting is he's a serial entrepreneur that had solved this problem in a parallel industry within IT and said, you know what? I can't believe health tech leaders hadn't solved these issues hadn't got rid of all this noise that not only hurt patients and their ability to sleep and recover, but they hurt providers. And you're now seeing that today with massive burnout, 60% of staff burning out in hospitals, nurse shortages left and right, ICU shutting down, the technology is available. It just hasn't been applied to healthcare. So that was the premise. So you have a fear as an IT leader, a serial entrepreneur, great background. He bumped into me who happened to have a great passion for healthcare. And I think together we said, I think this could work. I really think we can apply this in a new way to conquer this such relevant problem today in healthcare. Absolutely powerful. And how long ago was that when you guys met at the Institute there? Oh, man, it seems like years ago, but um, that was just, I would say, uh, spring of last year. So April so. Very exciting. And from there, David, it is true. You, you nailed it on some of those just staggering statistics of burnout and fatigue and where we're at. A lot of people will say, well, David, why hasn't this been done before? And I'm sure you and your co-founder went out there, asked the questions, try to understand the marketplace, try to understand how to solve for it. What did you hear out there to that, hey, why hasn't this been done before question? Mike, actually, that's a great question. It has been done before. We work on the shoulders of giants. There are clinical leaders like Mary Svok and Barbara Drew who are academics and they're clinicians who have solved some of these issues regarding, let's say, alarms and alarm fatigue that plague healthcare today, but they did that 15 years ago without tech. They did it with analysts and clinicians and people that were trudging through to try to solve these problems, and they solved it temporarily, but it didn't scale. The timing maybe wasn't correct for things like artificial intelligence, data science, machine learning, and all the other things that we're leveraging today at CalmWave to take it forward, to carry it through so we could see mass adoption. So I'd say there have been early clinical wins, but there haven't been any major technological wins, nor administrative wins, which is the other challenge that maybe we'll get into today. We are going to get there in just a moment, but want to ask some questions to set the stage to have you do that elevator pitch of who CalmWave is. We're going to get there in just a moment. But for a few more questions for you, David. For our community that may not be familiar with this space and with this issue in the industry, can you define what does alarm fatigue mean to our clinicians, to the industry, to the patients? What does that mean? And why is it such an issue that we need to solve? You mentioned some of those statistics on the front end, but maybe further define what exactly that means and why it needs to be solved. Yeah, so many of us probably experienced, unfortunately, either themselves or a family member in the hospital. And when they're connected up to, let's say, a monitoring device in an ICU, the data has shown that typical ICU, 771 alerts are occurring per patient per bed. These are proven studies. 
that's a crazy number of alerts. But when you begin to look at those 771 alerts, 95 plus percent of them are actually non-actionable. So why is that a problem? Well, alerts and alarms beeping, one, that are false, create a sense of chaos, stress for the patient and their ability to sleep and recover. Their family members wondering, what's going on with my loved one here in the bed that's sick and injured? Why are these devices beeping and you're ignoring it? And then the third one, the fatigue aspect is going to be clinicians hear this noise all day, the incessant beeping, the cacophony of noise, and they ignore it. And in some cases, when they ignore it, they even become numb to it. And ignoring versus being numb to it are slightly different. When you become numb to it, now you're running into a situation where mistakes can occur. Patient care is impacted. And in some cases, people have even died. So when you begin to impact care because you're having too many false alarms, that's where the alarm fatigue begins. And now you're seeing a stressful environment for patients. You're seeing a stressful environment for the workers. And it's not sustainable. It's impacting the whole healthcare dynamic. Perfect segue to then ask you, David, who is CalmWave and how are you going about solving that very big problem that you just described? Well, I would say, you know, CalmWave is enterprise grade software platform. We remediate alarm fatigue. We improve staff retention. We transform operations health through data science and AI. We take inspiration from the hard one lessons learned in enterprise IT. That's where Ophir comes from to help the healthcare industry improve retention, reduce burnout, improve patient outcomes. But we start with those alarms by reducing those non-actionable alarms. So now take us into a health the hospital environment. I'm there. I'm in those rooms. I'm in that building. How is CalmWave actually being implemented? Is it installed on the machines within the room? How is that happening within a health system walls in that day of work? Yeah, so enterprise-grade, HIPAA-compliant, cloud-based software platform. So look at this. As this sits in the hospital ecosystem. So imagine in an ICU, you have multiple command stations. This is a digital command center where every nurse, every administrator, every physician can see up on the monitors. They can look at every computer that they may be logging into to see a dashboard of information that helps to not increase data overload and cognitive overload, but reduce cognitive overload. So we're consolidating a lot of the information that's flowing through the systems and flowing through the hospital's network and providing those analytical insights so that the artificial intelligence aspect of this is consolidating that information, providing some predictive analytics, helping improve and drive outcomes, and even alerting or providing early warning where there might be something like deterioration. And you also mentioned too, and thank you for painting the picture on kind of a day-to-day what that looks like, David, but you also mentioned, hey, this was kind of founded and thought of the breakthrough with you and Ophir getting together and launching this kind of in the heat of the pandemic. You know as well as I do, David, during the pandemic, we went remote in a lot of different ways, and that included remote monitoring, having the patient at home. What does this look like as well? Does this apply, does CalmWave apply to these new care settings, right? We're starting to see patients want to be in their home for care. What does it look like for remote monitoring, predictive monitoring as such? Do you see CalmWave being in that space as well? Maybe you already are. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you think about the remote monitoring that's occurring now, it's the same thing. Lots of data flow, lots of information, but again, it's cognitive overload. Too much information, too much data not knowing what to do with it can still cause an over-alerting and over-alarming. It still can cause a bit of overload. Let's get back to one of the key aspects of what CalmWave is trying to do. We're trying to take all those signals to provide a sense of load on the providers as well. So we want to improve patient care, but we also want to make sure that that nurse isn't burning out or that tech isn't burning out or that physician isn't burning out. And we can look at all the flow information going across, whether it be remote or in the hospital, so that it's a consistent measure that they don't have to input anything. It's automatically flowing all the time. That's the beauty here. It's not adding any additional burden to healthcare providers. Let's talk about those providers. Let's talk about those end users, David. As well as I do, we can have the vision. We can have the pitch of a company. It can sound great, but it doesn't mean anything unless the end user, the consumer, has a wonderful and delightful experience. What has the feedback been from some of those users that have been involved with CalmWave? Yeah. I would say visceral in the fact that we can appeal to the anger (laughs) that many have. A physician who's an ER physician just wrote about the idea of interruptions. I posted in CalmWave about interruptions and how devastating it is to his daily 
method of caring for patients. So from that standpoint, we're getting good feedback saying, you're solving a real problem that I identify with. That's the first thing. The second thing is, uh uh-oh, this is a real problem I've been dealing with. And is CalmWave able to solve this? Is the idea of a quiet ICU even possible? Are you crazy, David? Are you crazy? And the answer is, well, CalmWave, Ophir, myself, the rest of the team, you have to be a little bit crazy to be in the startup world to solve the most challenging issues because they're the most impactful, they're the most threatening, but they're the most meaningful as well. Oh, I absolutely love it. And I couldn't agree more. I've had those responses to me through my entrepreneurial journey as well. Like, are you serious, Mike? Are you really <laughs> going to do that? Okay. But to your point too, you know, let's go back to that physician that you posted about on the site. That is powerful. If you think about that physician's experience and what that means and that the detriment to the care that he or she can be giving to their patients, that is just a powerful statement of the need of this type of technology. I mean, just incredible. So David, you know, let's also look future state. Let's take that crystal ball off the shelf for a bit. What are you seeing, right? I mean, this isn't slowing down right now in healthcare. It just seems like burnout is just ever increasing. Can we ever really say we're on the other side of the pandemic, right? This is something now is, let's just call a spade, it's endemic. It's going to be with us for quite some time. These are what seems to be intractable issues in our industry with burnout and how the system has been constructed, good, bad, or ugly or otherwise. Where do you see things heading? Is there hope? Is there a way for the future of healthcare to be innovated, to get to a future state where we aren't seeing the levels of burnout that we currently are that are just not sustainable, as you know, as well as I do? And where within that future, if it's a hopeful one, where do you also see calm wave coming up uh, in the next two to three to five years? When I think about the pandemic, I would like to think that it was a blip. It was a blip, blip that took us over a tipping point to hope, hopefully open our eyes to say things need to change. The healthcare system is massively fragile. So that's how I look at the pandemic. And I would say what's going to happen now, what I'm hoping and what I believe and what we're aiming on is the idea that Healthcare systems, because they're so fragile, need to start operating more operationally efficient. Now, what I mean by that is that healthcare systems are a lot of feel. It's a black box. It's a special art. It's very complex. People are so unique. I agree with all those things. However, there are a number of tools and a lot of technology that's being thrown at healthcare without considering that special sauce that exists there with clinicians and providers. The administrators and hospitals need to start working more operationally and start looking at tools that are focused on the operations of technology. And what that means is they need to hire more technologists themselves. If I think about CalmWave and its adoption in the future, not only do we need the buy-in from the clinicians, that's the nurses, that's the doctors, that's department heads, but it's also going to be the informaticists. These are going to be the IT leaders, the CIO, the engineers that they're hiring, the data scientists that they're hiring. If they don't hire these technologists into those businesses, and yes, I said it, I'm calling a hospital a business, these institutions I'm calling a business, they need to bring in these people, more operational leaders and technical leaders, because the future of healthcare requires massive technology and therefore it requires employees and people that understand the tech to implement the tech successfully. The tech's already been there for years. The struggle has been the adoption of it. So in the future where I see CalmWave, I see us as being hopefully a shining example of how to take and meet the healthcare systems where they are and helping them transition to bring in those tech leaders to integrate technology in a very data-centric way and help them move forward so that the next calm wave that comes by, they'll hopefully have an easier pathway than what we have right now. You couldn't have said it any better, David. I literally cannot agree with you more. We have more tech than we know what to do with in this industry. I mean, it is. I mean, we are just flooded with technology and solutions that are here to and ready to help the industry. But you said it perfectly. If the other side of that coin and those and those experts and those team members aren't within those systems to adopt and implement, it's going to continue to fall short. And we've seen that time and time and time again. We can't keep doing that because we know what that means, right? But to your point also. Where else do you see this type of technology helping with our clinicians? We talked about virtual care. We talked about care at home. We're talking about within the hospital setting walls. Does this also potentially go back to the patient as well, right? And what do I mean by that patient as the consumer? We're talking about connected health. 
we're talking about having all these wearables as the consumer. I don't know the answer. I look to you as the expert in this space. It seems like there could be a future state where consumers are getting alarm fatigue as well when you think about all the consumables and all the wearables that they're wearing for their monitoring of their health. Would that be correct? Or what do you see there? You said so much there. I'm jumping. Like, how do I even respond to that? I would say, boy, when I look at where some of this is going, the first thing is Comwave taking high frequency signals and alarms and trying to one, remediate them. So remove the non-natural, the false alarms. Two, the ability to measure load in the hospital. That is something that I want to really emphasize. That's a special sauce. That's something unique. That's where a lot of our IP is. That is going to be applied first in ICUs, looking at nurses. But the idea of taking all the signals and flowing through a hospital, that has huge implications for beginning to find quantifier, quantifiable, objection, very objective, clear ways to measure load every day in and out, second by second, across all the employees, across department versus department, hospital versus hospital, like size institution versus another institution, in another region. That is where operations health grows to operational maturity. Again, some of this is related in a model that another company did a while ago. This is PagerDuty. PagerDuty did this within the IT space. So that's the playbook that is our phase one. That's chapter one of CalmWave and what we can do is expanding that across the healthcare paradigm. So it starts with ICUs. It starts broader beyond the ICUs. It goes in the other departments, the emergency rooms, the, the med surge, and that expands. And now you're looking at better care, reduced alarms, but you're also looking at the health of each of the team members within each of those organizations. Now, Mike, we go beyond healthcare. And I think if you think about us as a data science company for a moment, and you think that we're an AI-focused company, the work that we're doing and some of the algorithms that we're building, the data science that we're coming up with, that can be applied to any area where you have alerts and alarms, any industry, whether it be supply chain or healthcare or IT or travel. There's so many different possible areas that we can apply some of the same methodologies and techniques. I don't want to overstate my own understanding of this. There's much smarter people than me on the team that are tackling really tough problems or doing some really great research right now that I look forward to sharing the world at some point in time. That will go beyond healthcare, no doubt. Then that's why I was kind of painting this picture about the quantified self and the consumer themselves. There's a ton of wearables and connected devices that we as consumers can wear But then what's the true signal with all of that noise that I can take and be actionable with my own health, right? It just, so just how you, what you just described to me is so fascinating, like the art of the possible of where this can go and what you and the Calm Wave team are building. I'm taking that idea, Mike. Sorry, it's mine now. I mean, run with it. Hey, you know what? We might have a part two on the podcast. We'll bring it back. We'll talk about the quantified self and separating out the signal and the noise. Absolutely. It's a fascinating subject for sure. Well, David, we're going to throw the crystal ball back on the shelf for now. We're going to bring it back to current state. As I mentioned to you before we hit record, we have a phenomenal community rallied around this podcast. Some of our nation's most passionate and determined leaders to move healthcare forward. And they tune in to be able to help and work alongside leaders just like you. So with that, David, what's one problem, need, or question that you and the Calm Wave team have that our community can be helping you with? Data and information. One of the biggest barriers today with startups and health tech organizations like CalmWave is our access to information. And here in the U.S., we're highly sensitive about sharing uh, patient information, and there's a lot of privacy questions. But what I will tell you is that other countries are starting to understand this, and they're opening up access to data and information, which is allowing them to accelerate in phenomenal ways. Some of my colleagues who live in other countries, it's amazing to see how fast they're moving with their technology, with their companies, with their organizations, because they have open access to information. There is some work. MIT partnered with Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. It's called PhysioNet, where they have a large database of open source healthcare data, HIPAA compliant, of course, and anonymized. But that's just one small example. We need more. So my, I guess my request, my big challenge is how do we get access to more information and more data, not just for ComWave, but for all of these U.S startups that have great ideas and great technology, but the only way they're going to reach the level of the bar of an FDA release, for example, or approval is by getting accelerated in access to information. And that's really what's, I think, constraining a lot of great organizations. That's really it. And you don't want to, have to just throw money at that because there are some small startups that may not have the funding that we do. 
it's even going to be harder for them. And we're not doing too bad ourselves, right? So I think that's a challenge that we have. I imagine many others have. And I would think a request to me is saying, get me data. But when I mean get me data, it's get us data. You're a phenomenal spokesperson for it. And I thank you for raising the flag because you're 100% spot on. There are so many innovators working tirelessly in this space. And that's a lot of the fuel to the innovations themselves, right? So you're spot on. And so for our community that can help you out on that uh, matter, because I know there's some folks that are really thinking critically, thinking very hard on how to execute against that exact request that you just mentioned. David, how do they get a hold of you, you know, contact points online, social media handles or otherwise? Yeah, great. Well, of course, LinkedIn, we're at Comwave Inc. Also Twitter, Comwave Inc., reach out to us. And if you want to email, do hello at comwave.ai. And that's Comwave, C-A-L, C-C-A-L-M, W-A-V dot A-I. So hello at comwave.ai, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Easy enough. And for our uh, listening community, just head on down to the show notes and your favorite podcast player to click on through to get a hold of David and the team. Or you can head over to our free global online community over at passionatepioneers.com. There will be a post for David's episode. We can also leave comments, feedback, suggestions, or otherwise, and get a hold of those contact points for David and the team. Again, over at passionatepioneers.com. All right, David, we're going to wind it down. Like I said, I think you signed up for episode two on uh, some of the things around quantified self. But you know what? We'll be back in contact on that at a later time. So we'll get you back now. You and the team can get back to causing all the good trouble with your efforts over at CalmWave. But uh, before we get you out of here, I've got one more piece for you. It's a fill in the blank. I'm a passionate pioneer because because I won't stop. <laughs> I love it. You won't. And, and I can tell you guys are fired up. You even brought it on the front end. You said it. You got to have that fire in the belly because it's very difficult to innovate. And I know you guys are not stopping. Matter of fact, you're just getting going on all the wonderful work happening within the Calm Wave team and mission. So, David, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for joining us. Can't wait to hear all the continued announcements and all the wonderful news coming out of the Calm Wave camp. But for now, again, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for joining us today on Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. We'd love to hear your feedback about the podcast so we can continue to improve this community and to further support the pioneers being featured. Lastly, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and invite your friends and colleagues to join us. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you back with us during our next episode.